All right, Coach Arns here. We're here to talk about Lane's coverage. This is a defensive coverage that's used on the goal line, five yards in, maybe seven yards in. The concept of Lane's coverage is that the seven pass defenders all have a lane, and it is a zone coverage. And it's good for when you have a lot of crossing routes. Now, look, we ran it 20 years ago, so it's an old, old coverage. Um, but I want to draw it up here for you, see what we get. Okay, so again, this is a, this is a coverage. Um, I guess you can consider this in a situation where you're expecting pass, but not necessarily. Okay, here's the sideline. Now, I'm just gonna put up a basic four-man front with three linebackers, Sam, Mike, Will, four defenders, corner, strong safety, free safety, corner. The alignment on your on your lanes defenders is ballpark five yards, okay? And you can play with that if you want to. The, the main concept of being in a lane is to play the outside leverage at the snap to play the outside leverage of the offensive man that you're lined up over and get your hands on the guy with outside leverage, okay? Now, when we did this, we played a lot of zone coverage, so we were used to playing actual cover two, not all this invented stuff that people do with cover two, real cover two where we're used to getting our hands on people. Even when we played three deep coverage, we were used to getting our hands on people. So this has a zone coverage principle to it. So basically what you're looking at is getting hands on the guy that you're lined up over and on that leverage, okay, for the outside guys. This is a typical two by two set. If we get three by one, your safety is the adjustment guy on that. Okay. <clears throat> now, again, what you want to do is get your hands on the receiver. So if they start coming straight off the ball, you want to shuffle your feet and get hands on the outside. Common route down on the goal line is double slants. Okay. So if we get something like double slants, I want to get my hands on my guy, knowing that I'm going to have inside help from the linebacker. Once I get hands on my guy, ride him where I know he's going to get taken over. I look to get back in my lane and play anything coming back inside. Okay. And that's basically how that we'll play uh, something like a double slam. Uh, any, anything else that happens, we just uh, initially, our job is to get our hands on outside leverage of a guy, then play our lane. So if we get something that's real typical, um, like a, let's just go over here. I'll just go ahead and talk about it. We get a pick play. We get something that's coming in motion to make a pick play for us. Of course, we're gonna come with the motion because the safeties are the adjustment guy in three by one, okay? I'm still trying to jam whoever it is I'm on the outside of, okay? Now, once he disappears, I'm jamming, I'm playing my lane. So I've got my lane. The strong safety's got his lane. The free safety now his, has his lane. So it's a lot of lines on the field right there, but that's basically how we would how we would teach that, how we would coach that. Okay, uh, keep in mind the basic principles of it: jam the guy that you're over his outside, and funnel him in, and then play something that's coming back to you. So the other one that's real popular is to get some kind of hitch, some kind of corner out. Everybody knows that. Everybody plays it. And here's how we play it. We want to play this, we want to destroy this route by being on the outside leverage. So let me just tell you, nobody expects you to be on the outside leverage right there. Everybody on offense thinks this guy's always going to be on the inside. It can destroy your route if you play it right here as the strong safety. Jam. And now I'm jamming hands on my guy till I get a threat. I don't have a threat yet. Okay, so I'm hands on my guy, right? Corner. Hands on my guy. Now I gotta get ready to play any ball that's over the top, but this corner route is really destroyed by the strong safety playing uh, that route right there and staying on it, knowing that he's gonna have help. If there's an inside route, the Sam's right there to play that, okay? Um, obviously you can design some route up and, and beat this coverage if you want to, but the main reason that we played this coverage was so that we didn't get picked off on any kind of um, on any kind of pick play, okay. Again, um, it, and it, however, however they want to run a, any kind of a pick play, we would always come off and just zone that off. All right. Um, 
if you had uh, go ahead and make a bunch, right? So people want to come down here and they want to run a bunch. Real simple. I'm going to take my, what's my rules? I'm going to line up over the outside leverage of my guy. Okay. However they come off the ball, I'm going to get my hands and play my zone. Obviously the corner is going to get ready to play the flat because you know you're going to, and, and this is why you play the coverage, right? So what's the normal thing that everybody wants to do? They want to pick this guy. So they'll set up two picks. This guy will run here. And these guys are chasing their man. The free safety, he can't ever make it. I can make that throw and catch. Okay, that's easy. We saw that in uh, I don't know, one of the playoff games or something. Um, so you just got to, you, that's what you got to work on. And obviously it works better if all the time you play uh, zone coverage. But if you're a man coverage team, you're still going to work on getting your hands on people anyway and play that. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different co uh, formations and all that we can go over. Um, I don't know. I, it, let's say somebody wants to, to, to run some kind of super old school offense on you, and you're still going to be in some kind of lanes coverage here. Now, if this guy gets way too wide, you might want to play with an inside leverage. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now, if you know what's happening, you can substitute, put another mic in for the free safety. But now these two guys got to communicate. If he comes inside, of course, he's hitting him. Anything to the flat, you can teach him to jump it. Now he's the second lane, okay? Same thing over here. If this guy goes out, he can take it. He's your next lane, okay? And that's how you can play your eye back sets. And you just got to work on those, knowing that this guy's going to get some slant help or should get slant help, okay? Uh, that's the basics of lane coverage. Um, lots of particulars to it, but if you just work on getting your hands and the outside leverage, and I'll tell you the other thing it helps with too. It helps with playing the run, because if I'm here, let me go one more thing, because you got to talk about the run, right? Okay. <clears throat> if I'm playing the run, and I'm one of these two guys, and these guys are coming off the ball, and I'm here jamming outside, and this turns into some kind of run play, I can see it, because I can play, I can have hands on him on his outside. The problem you get into so many times, you play inside leverage or some kind of man down here, right? You're, you're playing man, these guys just run you off, and you're basically not even on the field to help on any kind of run play over there. So also like it against the run, all right? So that's it. I hope that helps. Um, hope that hope the main thing is hope it finds something that you can pull something out of here that you can get just a little bit better on, especially down at the goal line, especially not getting picked off. The pick play is terrible. The refs hardly ever call it. We all can't stand it on defense. So quit waiting for them to make a call and just play lanes coverage. If you want your inspiration for the day, let me see. I don't know if that'll show or not, but um, it's just some of the things I talk to my students about and my old football players. All right, have a great day.